Hello YouTube, it's Midnight Werewolf. Today I'm gonna show you my usual setup for mouse and keyboard that I do basically on any new system that I install, like right after. It consists of setting up your host controllers, doing minor like power tweak stuff, and uh, this. So first of all, what you should do is to test your polling rate with Razer polling rate tester. Uh, I do not suggest you to use any browser stuff. This program is much more it shows much more reliable data. Link is gonna be in the description. You should install it. Then what you need to do, press M, select your mouse, select the highest polling rate it supports, press OK, then start test. And if your polling rate does not look like that, that means this video is gonna be helpful for you. Okay, uh, exit the test. So first of all, like first thing we should do is make sure that you connected your peripherals to the right USB ports on your motherboard. Yeah, uh, some guys say that you should connect it to the top hub with the PS2 connector. Some guys say that you should connect it to a LAN hub. The only right way to check which ports are the best for you, for your particular system, is to use the program called HWinfo. I will shortly explain uh, basically, on AMD systems, you have one hub that uh, goes directly to a CPU and other hubs goes to a chipset. We need to connect our peripherals to a hub that goes directly on CPU. On Intel, as far as I could find, in most of the cases, all of the USB, all of the host controllers, they go on the chipset. So it doesn't really matter like where you're gonna connect. Uh, very important to connect mm, your peripherals directly to your motherboard. Do not connect them to any S-Media hubs. Connect your peripherals only to Intel host controllers. How to check which host controller and which ports on your motherboard uh, go on a CPU, which one goes to a chipset. We downloading HWinfo. Not checking anything, pressing start. Waiting until it loads, then expanding the bus section all the way down. What we need to find there is your host controllers. As you can see, I have two. First one is a chipset host controller. Second one is USB Matisse Wermer host controller. What is Matisse Wermer? Matisse Wermer is uh, a names for Zen 2 and Zen 3 CPUs. So we can definitely say that this one is our CPU host controller. And this one is a chipset. Yeah, like it's easy to understand because we have chipset in its name. Okay, what we need to do now? Check your host, uh, CPU host controller first and unplug all unnecessary stuff from, from there. Uh, plug only your mouse and keyboard. As you can see, I have my audio interface there as well, just because it does not work in chipset host controller. Then, when you manage your stuff, uh, by the way, this program does not update any info in real time, so you need to reboot it in order to check your peripherals after you make any changes. Then you go to our CPU host controller and you need to remember these three values. On Intel, you should go for the host controller that your peripheral is connected to. Like the mouse and keyboard, I mean. You can even separate them, like connect them to a different host controller. If you have, for example, two, you can separate mouse and keyboard to a different one. And then remember the numbers of the host controller you connected your mouse and keyboard to. Then what we need to do. Open Power Setting Explorer. Then scroll down to USB settings. USB selective suspend setting disabled. You should, uh, here you have uh, your power plans and you should make a change in front of the power plans that you 
using. I use only one, so I do a change in front of the active one. Then USB streaming power management off, interrupt streaming mode, lock interrupt routing, press apply, close the program. Then MSI utility v3, you should open it with administrator. And here we need to find the right host controller by the numbers that we saw in HW info. So for me it's 1003. I can check it here, 1003. And I changing interrupt priority to high, pressing apply, closing the program. Done. In the policy tool, right? We need to create a mask for our host controller on the best physical core available on our CPU. How to check the cores? You should um, open latency mon and then bench your system for some time, maybe for like 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Just open all of the stuff that you usually use, uh, the game you usually play, maybe it's browser, maybe it's some like recording stuff and etc. And test your PC under full load. After you've done that, you go to CPUs and checking the lowest interrupt cycle time cores. I have SMT off on my CPU. So I have only five, only six cores. These six cores, all physical. If I has SMT on, I should have like 12 cores. And how to understand like which core is physical, which core is virtual. So usually it goes in order like um, physical, virtual, physical, virtual, physical, virtual. If you have SMT on, if you have SMT off, all of the cores that you see on the screen is going to be physical cores. Then you're picking the core with the lowest interrupt cycle time. For, for example, for me, it's CPU 3. Then we go to interrupt affinity policy tool, pressing U on your keyboard. Ignore this error. It's going to pop up every time, but it doesn't really, doesn't really important. So for example, we, I found one of the host controllers. I'm checking location info. Location info is wrong. So I keep searching until I found uh, the right one, 1003. Then we pressing set mask and setting our mask on the best core, the best physical core that we found after testing our program, our PC in Titan Simon. For example, three, you press OK, you press restart, your host controller is going to be restarted. If your peripherals doesn't work after applying the mask, replug them to different USB ports, then uh, just put the mask on a different core. Then uh, basically reboot your PC reboot your like host controller if it's going to be rebooted instantly test instantly if it says uh, it should be rebooted after after like a pc reboot then reboot a pc and then test mm. sometimes like on some cores it just doesn't work there's no like a big problem in it you're just changing the core and it should be fine after you've done done with that you can basically test your pointing grade that's that's the whole thing uh, you can test a polling rate in polling rate tester. If um, the polling rate stability increased, that's very good. Also, you're going to have some <laughs> minor effect on your mouse responsiveness. It's going to be more responsive. It's going to be more stable. Like the whole feeding of your mouse is going to be more stable. And also I have some minor stuff here like uh, keyboard and mouse data queue size. So keyboard data queue size, I usually use 20 decimal. On mouse that queue size, I use 25 decimal because, like, on 20 decimal, on 8K hertz, it mm, it's not work stable all of the time. So I just switch to 25 decimal. Uh, you can find the best value for for your mouse. You can do this through like reg edit. Mm, let's see. Um, Paste this, and then you just change 
change the value in decimal on your mouse.xs. I do not like do that, so I just use usual stuff. There's a little thingy to disable your USB devices idle. It's not gonna change your like input feel much, but it's not gonna do worse. So it's good to have. Then like Mark C Windows acceleration fix, just the usual stuff, you know, everybody knows. Mm, and basically that's it. That's the setup. And after that, yeah, reboot a PC, test everything up. If your polling rate stability increased, I'm really happy for you. I'm really glad that this video helped you. Because like some people have problems with their polling rate stability and they does they're just wondering why like I have 8k hertz polling rate mice mouse and uh, it just stacks on 7400 or like 7600 for example and doesn't go up doesn't go all the way up to 8k hertz so now you know how to maximize your polling rate stability and if your graph looks like this then I'm really happy for you it doesn't drop down it's stable on 8k then uh then 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 what then i'm gonna finish this video then i hope that you're gonna click a like and follow my channel also join my discord when you can tag me like this and ask any question also i do aim coaching link in the description if you need help with your aim progression message me on fiverr we're gonna work it out See you in the next video, guys. Peace.